Thank you. You may be seated. And family, thanks each and every single one of you for coming here today, answering your call to bear witness to this work that's taking place, the marriage of Isa and Caleb. As witnesses, each and every single one of you, if ever there's a question about the work that took place today, about this wedding, it is your responsibility to stand up and say, I was there. I was there, I witnessed it, I watched it. That is your job as a witness. We'd also like to talk about the vows that you see all along here in this, in this room today and what they stand upon, the cedar vows. It comes from the cedar tree, the tree of life. It gives us many things. And what it represents, what they stand upon, is a new beginning. Together, their new life starts here and now. And that's what you witnessed today. And we want the young couple to keep in mind the seven laws that our people live by. Health, happiness, generations, generosity, humbleness, forgiveness, and understanding. Those are the things that we all try to live by. And we know that you have all the support of the people in this room to live the, your life the way that you are meant to. You're very rich with all these people here, with all your family. We're honored that the young people chose to follow some of our traditional ways, the ceremonies that our people have done long, long before. And it's important that we bring back these ways because they were taken from us. And what they're going to do is the food exchange. We're going to ask Kaylin to take the food and uh, feed Isa. Before humans, the animals were here long before us. When the humans arrived, the creator asked that they take care of the humans. The animals, when they met, they said, these humans, they don't know anything. They don't know how to take care of themselves feed themselves, clothe, them, clothe themselves. So the animals who came forward first was the bear. He said, I represent all the fur being animals. I will feed these people, clothe them, shelter them, give them utensils and medicine, now and forever and for all generations. And the king salmon came forward next and said, I represent all of those who swim in the, in the waters. We will take care of these humans as well. We will feed them, shelter them, clothe them, give them utensils and medicine, now and for all future generations. The Saskatoon berry stepped forward next. I represent all the all the plant people, all the berries. We will take care of these humans. We will feed them, clothe them, shelter them, give them utensils and medicine. Next came forward the bitter root. The bitter root. He said, I represent all the rooted plants, the ones that live below ground, we will feed, shelter, clothe, give them medicines and utensils.
And those are the four that we honor all the time. They give their lives for us. They take care of us in more ways than we, than we know. The other important thing for us as homeless people is water. Without water, there is no life. As you feed each other and give each other water, you're not just feeding your physical body. You're going to take care of each other mentally, spiritually, and emotionally. We're very honored that you chose to do this in this way, the old ways, the original ways. <clears throat> we'll move to your vows. The, the young couple has written their own vows. It's very touching that they did this it, mean, it has more meaning when they do it in this way. Are you going to be getting this up? Here stands my best friend, my beloved, Anthony Shortman, my wife. I give to you the best of me, my heart, my soul. <laughs> MLS, please don't have to believe in shock. Round the house. I vow to not take any of your less pleasing habits personally, even though I really wish every time you'd go, every time you go shopping, you'd stop wearing your shoes on. <laughs> <laughs> we were in high school, applying for our Sunday, and quietly, without ever noticing, our Sunday is today, and our future is to come. Galen, in the six years and seven months, you have shown me to be a better person. and you have given me the confidence to pursue my dreams. I vow to be your person, your first, your best friend, and provide you strength through the struggles we will endure in that new journey. We will live a life of constant adventure together. I promise to make you happy, to make you laugh, to cherish you, and to always be I vow to be your ever faithful, honest, open husband. Some people are good at being a mom. I always wondered how difficult it was to love something that's scattered into a thousand pieces. Like trying to complete a puzzle when you don't even know if you can have all the right parts. But you showed me that not every piece has to be in place. That love can exist for the most imperfect and broken people. I appreciate you more because of the road I've traveled. My past has hum humbled me to recognize the importance of your loyal and caring nature. And you continue to embody the characteristics of the only person I could ever desire to be my husband every day. I promise to wholeheartedly support your relationship with your family and to always respect your culture and your role in your community. I promise to respect you as an individual with your own wants and needs and to try to achieve your greatest happiness whether or not I agree with it. I promise to comfort you and to try to exemplify and equally return the undoubting support you show in times of conflict and adversity. I promise to try not to spend all of our money on shoes <laughs> and adopting rescue dogs, but instead to invest into the future to help progress us to where you want us to be. I promise not to threaten divorce and to suppress my murderous rage when I find an array of dirty, mismatched shops scattered amongst our living room furniture. I promise to listen with understanding and to remain loyal and open I strongly believe in karma, and you are all the good karma I will ever need. I'm incredibly lucky to have the opportunity to spend my life with you, and I promise you I will dedicate myself to building our marriage with you for the rest of our lives, whether it stays in a thousand pieces or one. Mm. Hey, this one. Next, we'll move to the ring exchange. We'll have the ring bearer come forward.
Place the ring on the third finger of the left hand and repeat after me. In honor of our unity, in honor of your unity, I give you this ring. I give you this ring. I ask you to wear it. I ask you to wear it. With pride and honor. With pride and honor. Today and forever. Today and forever. <laughs> Kaylin. Place the ring on the third finger of the left hand to repeat after me. In honor of our unity, In honor of your unity I give you this ring. I give you this ring. I ask you to wear it with pride and honor today and forever. the two witnesses, the, the, the best man and a maid of honor to help with this blanket. Blankets amongst our people are the most valuable assets you can ever own or be given. Traditionally, our blankets took a long time and a lot of hard work to make, to gather the wool, to clean it, to spin it, to dye it, to weave it. With this blanket, we're going to wrap the couple and all of the love that is here in this room today, right now. I want them to soak in that love, to feel it. There are going to be times, happy times, sad times, as every couple goes through. But I want you to remember this moment and this blanket. I want you to use this blanket as often as possible so that you can remember this love, you remember this feeling of all the people that love you in this room. If you have a difficult time, you get that blanket. You sit next to the other. You wrap yourselves as you're wrapped now and you remember. Remember this feeling. It will get you through everything. All this love. Every single person here in this room loves you both. Very much. I can feel it. So I want you to remember that. And use it as, off, as often as you can. We're going to move to the last portion now, which is the legally binding part. There's no turning back after this. <laughs> Kaylin, oh, you can face each other. <laughs> yep, that's fine. Whatever works for you. <laughs> Kaylin, repeat after me. I solemnly declare that I do not know of any. Lawful impediment. Why I, Kaylin Marie Kenyon, may not be joined in matrimony to Isa Zachary James Point. I call on those present to witness that I, Kaylin Marie Kenyon, take Isa Zachary James Point. To be my lawfully wedded husband. Isa, repeat after me. I solemnly declare. I solemnly declare that I do not know of any. That I do not know of any. 
Lawful impediment. Lawful impediment. Why I? Why I? Issa Zachary James Point. Issa Zachary James Point. May not be joined in matrimony. May not be joined in matrimony. To Kaylin Marie Kenyon. To Kaylin Marie Kenyon. I call on those present. I call on those present. That I. That I. Issa Zachary James Point. Issa Zachary James Point. Take Kaylin Marie Kenyon. Be my lawfully wedded wife. To be my lawfully wedded wife. By the power vested in me by the Kahatma Nation, the Solomon Nation, the province of British Columbia, I now pronounce to you husband and wife in nature.